in the early 50s, my father, who had been interested in film and had uh, seen this Joris Evans film, obviously before he was 17, was also looking at other documentary filmmakers like Robert Flaherty, um, who made Nanook of the North and other famous films, um, uh, Humphrey Jennings, who made some marvelous movies about um, the World War II in London. Um, so he was aware of the possibilities of documentary film, and he started a film society. He wanted to show foreign films in Cleveland, and he actually, they actually did st start showing some films at the Masonic uh, Temple, um, but they got raided by the Vice Squad. Um, you know, I think the first movie that was uh, unacceptable to, uh, to official Cleveland was a film about the birth of a baby, um, an explicit movie about the birth of a baby. But anyway, um, enough, enough problems, um, uh, the city threw enough problems in his way that he decided that it was unlikely that he was ever going to be successful with this venture. And he, he, the Film Society came to our house, and he showed films um, at, at, what the, at what we called the Film Society for the next 20, 25 years at home. Um, so when I was growing up, we saw um, the films of Eisenstein and Jean Vigo and um, many, uh, just about any famous um, filmmaker of, the, of that period. Um, so my father was, um, he was a photographer, he was um, uh, passionate about film, and these things obviously came together and he decided to make a film. So um, <coughs> we took the streetcar a lot when I was a kid, and um, I remember it fondly. Um, it was, um, I'm not quite sure why those cars are so much more delightful and interesting than a bus, but they are, <laughs> or were, and if you go to other cities, you can still ride streetcars. But in any case, he decided to make this movie, and um, he and his, his friend, um, Nick Lobatsy, who later was a photographer for the Cleveland Museum of Art, and um, published a, a, a book for the, his first book at the age of 80-something uh, last year, um, uh, he lives out in the West Coast now. But he and Nick and some of uh, his other friends uh, uh, made this movie. And I think my father was um, probably did 99% uh, of the uh, shooting. And I know he did 99% of the editing because he edited the film in our living room with a, an ancient little editing machine, um, splicing the things together. But... Um, the music, I'm not, I'm not sure about the music. I asked Nick about the music. He said he played the kazoo and the juice harp, um, <laughs> but he couldn't quite remember who played the guitar, and he didn't know who had actually suggested the music. But you'll see that I think that the music is very effective, um, and it, it, uh, the editing and the music together um, bear some relationship to the, um, uh, to the montage or the theories of montage that um, the, the early and great filmmakers like Eisenstein promoted. Um, so to get to the movie, um, you'll see the movie. Um, I think it's a, it's a great, um, I think the word poetic could, could be used um, not inappropriately to describe it. It's not about streetcars for all of those of you who may have come just to see streetcars. It's about the life of people in a city and in this case, it relates to streetcars and that the streetcar forms sort of the um, background to this life. Um, but the movie isn't just isn't about a, a mode of transportation. It's about a feeling and attitude and the day in the life of people who live in a big city. And I think my father was in love with this city. Um, and for those of you, I can see some gray hair out there who remember the city in the 40s and 50s. Um, Cleveland was a hopping place and a lively and wonderful um, city. Um, um, it has ceased to be that. But in any case, um, this, uh, this movie has not been shown, as I say, almost at all. Um, my father offered the, the Cleveland Public Library a copy. He wanted them to buy it, and they thought that maybe he should donate it. And my father wasn't about to donate his movie, so the Cleveland Public Library never had this movie, although it had a fabulous film collection um, in those years. In fact, I think it was, it was w well known across the United States having one of the best in the country. And in my father's film society, he always showed a short and he showed a feature. And the shorts, most of them came from the collection of the Cleveland Public Library. Um, but um, so it hasn't been seen much, if at all. I mean, it has been shown a couple of times in Boston on public, on public uh, television. But other than that, you're the first people to see this in the city of Cleveland. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, my father introduced films at the Cleveland Museum of Art for a number of years. He sort of ran their film society. And the last thing I always said was, there will be no talking during the film. <laughs>